Hello, this is John Donovan. I'm editor of Portable Design Magazine, and I'm here this morning at uh, Arm DevCon with uh, Jeff Lees, who's the uh, general manager of the microcontroller division for NXP. Yes, that's right. Jeff, good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, Jeff, tell me something about uh, about your division. What sort of um, uh, where do you fit in with uh, in the ARM ecosystem, and what uh, what are your what are your products and, yeah. and your plans? We're, we're the microcontroller business operation at uh, NXP Semiconductors, and we're a pretty broad business. We uh, do general purpose microcontrollers for most of the market segments, from automotive through industrial, consumer, medical applications. Covers a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you have a full line of eight, 16, 32 bit microcontrollers? It's mostly eight and six folks? and 32, but okay. uh, of course all the growth is coming in the 32 bit space these days. Right, all right. And what sort of application, uh, within the, uh, the, portable, the portable domain in particular, which is what our readers are particularly mm -hmm. concerned about, um, where do you position your particular products? Well, we um, range right from the, uh, the ARM 96 yeah. with graphics controller okay. for portable consumer equipment and medical equipment, right down to the lowest power, um, low-end microcontroller applications, such as low-power USB interfacing. Okay, good, and where do you, uh, what sort of um, application areas would you, would you would happen in, the port in portables? Would you be in cell phones? In particular, um, not not in uh, general cell phones, but uh, um, we have actually been in one of the uh, largest volume uh, portable media player cell phone applications in the past, and uh, mostly it's in the uh, handheld equipment, uh, the handheld consumer equipment and uh, medical type application. Okay, um, tell me something about your division. How big is it? Uh, where are you located? Are you? Uh, we're, we're located, headquartered in San Jose, California. Okay, that's we're good. about a $200 million microcontroller business in total, and with very strong growth in the ARM sector. Okay, and uh, you, what sort of ARM cores uh, do you use? Well, we introduced our first ARM product in 2004. It was the industry's first uh, flash microcontroller operating mm -hmm. at uh, 60 megahertz back then, zero weight state from flash. That was our... Uh, lead innovation at the time, and since then we've developed right through to ARM 926, ARM 968, and to this week we announced the Cortex-M3 family. Very good, uh, tell me something about that announcement. What, uh, what are you doing with Cortex-M3? So um, one of the first things we wanted to do is to provide a continuity path for our existing wide base of ARM 7 users. So our first Cortex-M3 family is actually a significant upgrade of our leading um, ARM 7 family, the LPC 2300 family. Mm -hmm. So the new Cortex family is the LPC 1700 family. Okay, with the uh, with that particular product compared to the uh, uh, your previous generation, how much? Uh, what's the difference in performance, and particularly with the power? Yeah, that's file? an interesting question. So, uh, uh, on the face of it, Cortex M3 offers a small improvement in efficiency. Right. Uh, but release two of the Cortex M3 core offers a significant improvement in low power. So it has specific software instructions for low power operation, mm -hmm. specific sleep modes, and it allows uh, much better um, low power operation for the whole system, not just the core. But in addition, almost for free, ARM um, were able to optimize the memory interfacing even from release two to release one. And so the end result actually is the 100 megahertz family compared to the 72 megahertz ARM 7 family that it replaces. So we're very, very pleased with the migration to Cortex M3. Very good. Now are you sampling this currently? Um, yeah, we actually have uh, um, evaluation systems down? operating here. And we'll be sampling lead customers over the next weeks and then the general market towards the end of Q4. Very good, okay. Any other uh, significant product announcements? Or yes, um, last week actually, on Monday, we announced uh, the industry's lowest cost ARM 9 based host on the go, high speed USB microcontroller. So we see that as the beginning of the migration to high speed USB in deeply embedded applications. Mm -hmm. So has that migration been slower than expected? I would have thought with uh, Most of our family today have uh, migrated to host on the go as well as the right. device functionality. It's pretty much exclusively been at the full speed level. I see. We have had one previous product as a high speed device, but now we see the migration to high speed host on the go mm -hmm. and device functionality. Very good. You say the lowest cost what in uh, production quantities. What's in your 10K quantities, from distribution, we're pricing at $2.80. Very good. Yeah. So we think that that's uh, no price barrier anymore to implementing high-speed USB compared to the previous 12 megabit. Good. Another announcement as well, that is we have the industry's fastest uh, flash 
microcontroller family, that's the ARM 968 family. Right. We've been able to raise the performance of the same flash subsystem right through to 125 megahertz. And we're getting good results at 150 megahertz, so that's the future direction is ever faster flash-based controllers. This, of course, leads to single-chip applications, much lower power in total system. Okay, good. You're, so you're, you're developing a, an extensive product line with the flash-based yes, controllers. Yes. Very good. Now, are you doing your own fabric on this, or are you going? We have um, a major uh, joint venture with TSMC. Right. It's called SSMC in Singapore. Okay. It's our key uh, 200 millimeter fab line. And then our advanced processes, 90 nanometer, 65 nanometer, and beyond. They're all in conjunction with TSMC. Okay, but you mentioned TSMC in Singapore, I don't think. TSMC in Singapore is a joint venture. We actually jointly own the fab. We own 60%, TSMC owns 40%. Okay, okay. You're in but on the, on the deeply there. advanced processes, we just use TSMC as a foundry. Very right, good. We find the, uh, the, the, the dual advantage, the 200 millimeter is a high volume, cost effective line, and it helps to that have investments sense. and capital expenditure there. Whereas in the advanced processes, we really need to take advantage of state of the art process. Sounds good. So going forward over the next uh, the next year or two, what sort of plans do you have for your... Well, you know, we intend to advance the ARM um, product family with uh, ARM's latest roadmap products, mm -hmm. products that are slowly being um, uh, discussed with the, the lead partners and uh, then hopefully have a whole new range of uh, leading edge products next year. Okay. And most importantly um, is the direction of low power. Um, we're seeing low power migration in all aspects of the product development now all the way from the EDA tool environment, right through the process technology, right through to the full system design. Yeah, that's certainly, become, that's certainly the number one problem that our, mm -hmm. our readers are, are facing. So yeah. anything, any progress you can make on that front is certainly going to be welcome. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, a, care to tip your hand key on direction which, for which, us, sir. which uh, processor you're going to be coming out with? Well, we intend to follow the Cortex-M3 roadmap. Right, okay. And with future core developments from on there. We're also looking very strongly at the mid-range and high-end Cortex families. Good. Okay, we look forward okay. to seeing you. Thank look you so much. to your announcements. Thank you, John. Very good, thank you.